I thought I came up with this clever trick working on the watch project that would make things more accurate. Well, maybe not. What I'm going to show you in this episode is actually part one of two episodes. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I shot myself in the foot and didn't realize it. And as it turns out, didn't realize it until I had scrapped five of these watch bodies because things were not aligned correctly. So let's jump in and I'll show you what I did. And hopefully you'll start to see where I went wrong. I wasn't really quite sure where I went wrong until much later, which is going to be part two. I got a new set of watch bodies from Thomas, and the first thing that I noticed when I tried to start milling them is that I was unable to clamp them with the inside diameter clamp. They were a little bit loose and I wanted to find out by how much, and so I used an inside diameter micrometer. This, however, did not work very well, and the reason it didn't work well is because, effectively, the 3D printed surface is similar to a cast surface. It's not even. So I switched over to my lathe and I started to cut down a boss and kept fitting the different watch bodies onto it until I found one that just barely fit. Alright, this one fits uh, very nicely. It has a little bit of wiggle room. Eh, well, actually, it's, it's pretty tight. But it doesn't go all the, on all the way because I have this little protrusion here, or I should say Thomas added that, which is the 12 o'clock mark. And so I cut this slot a little bit deeper than it, than it needs to be. Now if we go to this particular one here, I tried all of the different watch bodies that I had, which is about 16 altogether. They pretty much all fit except for this one. And so this one you can see does not quite go on. It's a little bit smaller. So the idea that I had is uh, this one right here is within the, basically I turned it down so that all of the watch bodies fit and it stays within an eight thousandths of an inch diameter range, which is the range of the inside diameter clamp. But this one falls outside of that range and it feels like it falls out of the range ever so slightly. So the idea that I have is I can have two sets of clamps, which is not ideal. You know, one inside diameter clamp is for the main range and then the other inside diameter clamp is for ones that are slightly smaller. I measured the resulting diameter with the micrometer and then from that, based on the clamping range of the inside diameter clamp, I chose the inside diameter that I was going to use for the clamp for the low end of the range. And then I had another, another idea. So again, here it is uh, fitting on the clamp that I've remachined and you'll see that in the rest of this video. And it doesn't quite fit. But, probably not by much, so I had this idea, well, maybe I can use a hose clamp to snug it down a little bit. So I, this is just snug, slightly snug, and you can see it still doesn't go on. If I give it a slightly more of a snug, so maybe a quarter of a turn, now it fits on. And then if I loosen this, It's a pretty good fit. Now I wouldn't want to trust this, I'd still want to screw this in and use the inside diameter clamp. But at this point, it would be safe to basically put this down, down here out of the way and then go ahead and do my million. So this is, you know, perhaps not ideal, but you know, it's going to work. It's going to mean that I have a way of not changing the diameter very much in the opposite direction and then expanding it out to actually hold it in place. So that's much better solution in terms of production because it means I don't have to change out the clamps. I decided to be clever, so I started out by roughly positioning the probe in the back left corner. And then I zeroed the X and Y. And my thinking is that I could use a three-point probing operation to pick up the exact position of this, but you can see right there that it wasn't in the right location. So I stopped this before it started uh, machining, and then I switched to the correct cycle, where you can see that it's going to the center of each of those uh, segments. 
And so my idea is that after this probing, it would know the location exactly. But as you'll see later, that was not the case. Whenever I'm working on new operations, I like to watch the machine and make sure it's doing what I expected. Here I could tell it wasn't. This was the engraving end mill rather than the large diameter one that I was expecting. So I stopped it and realized I needed to change the tool. With the correct end mill, it's now milling out the larger diameter for the inside diameter clamp that will clamp onto the new version of the watches that have a larger inside diameter. And then milling the slot deeper. This is the slot where the 12 o'clock mark on the watch will sit, which provides the rotational alignment of the watch body. And then a quick handy burn with a file before test fitting the watch body to see how it fits. And as you can see, it fits really well, just as designed. And so I'm testing to make sure that when I tighten it, it fits well, it doesn't rotate. And then when I loosen it, it comes off well. I can put it back on and tighten it again, and everything is working nicely. A quick tap to make sure it's firmly seated. And then I could start milling at the back of the watch. Now at some point, I noticed that when it was milling the lugs, it seemed like it was a little bit different on the right side than to the left side, the right being closer to the camera. So I had a hint that perhaps something wasn't quite right. However, visually the difference between the left and right was not enough for me to be certain that something was wrong, so I continued on. If I get another hint when milling this, it, when it started the bore on the left side, it was quieter than when it was milling the bore on the right side. So that told me that it was milling more material, or more of a depth of material, on the right side for the first pass than on the left side. using a carbide slitting saw to cut the grooves for the clamps that will hold the case into the body. Milling the groove for the o-ring. Deburring with a 90 degree cutting tool. And then finally thread milling to create the 0.5 millimeter pitch thread that is on the case. I flipped it over to the other side and then there were various operations before it got to the finishing and I'm just showing a couple of them here briefly. The next hint that things were not quite right came during the finishing operation. When it switched to milling the lugs on the right side, everything was fine. But then when it switched to the back side, right here it was cutting material where it did not cut material on the right, which made it seem like for some reason the toolpath was shifted to the right of where it should have been. When we uh, look at the final results and you look at the lugs, it's really hard to tell that they're, they're different. So they, they felt like they were different when they were in the milling machine, but I wasn't completely sure. And, you know, if I looked here very carefully at the ring inside, I might have noticed that it was off-center, but again, it was kind of subtle. Now where it became very clear is when I had it flipped over in the machine. And you can see on this side, it clearly gouged the part. You know, there's a chamfer here that shouldn't be there. And then there are two gouges. Let me use a pointer. So there's a gouge there, and there's a gouge there with this chamfer. Whereas if we look at the other side, you know, it's very clean which is what I would expect it. So it was very clear after I did all of the milling, well, except for the stem, that it was not correctly positioned. So at this point, I was pretty frustrated. I knew that things were not working out well. I ended up scrapping five watch bodies before I had an idea of exactly what the problem was. I then measured things and verified that I was correct about the problem. So what I did is I went back again, remilled the fixture, but this time using the back left corner with the probe instead of the three points. 
and then everything turned out perfectly. I want to thank my Patreon supporters uh, listed here. Please help me grow the channel by giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time where I explain what went wrong, why it went wrong, and how to get around it.